Hi everybody. This is probably the last look we're going to have at this crayfish tank. I think today's the day I'm going to break it down and we're going to move this crayfish over into my big 125 gallon native tank. The other crayfish that was in this tank is already over there. So this one will simply be going over there to join it. I do have to say that I have been mislabeling this crayfish for the entire time I've had it. I thought it was a Procambara species and I was not sure which actual species it was because it didn't really seem to match any of them. So I did a little more research this morning and I found what is a, an exact match for this crayfish. And then when I read about the description and its habitat range and how invasive it is, uh, there's no doubt that this is actually a virile crayfish, not a Procambara species. It is a Cambara species, but I get lost once you start talking about all that genus and family and all that kind of stuff. So this is actually a virile crayfish, and they're very, very common uh, around here in Maryland. So that is no doubt the one I've got. And I've grown up seeing these my whole life, and I did not realize there were multiple species of crayfish here in Maryland. There's only one or two uh, that are common, but there are some invasive species that have been released, uh, often through the fishing industry. People get them for bait, and they either get off the line or they just dump out their crayfish that are left over at the end of the day. And while they may not be carrying any parasites or anything, they are invasive species sometimes and so these you know animals get let loose into the water systems and now we have multiple species living here in Maryland but this one is undoubtedly a virile crayfish I had someone mention the other day I actually had a couple people mention the other day about sexing these crayfish and how to tell the difference between males and females I have the bad habit of simply calling an animal a male if I don't know what it is I refer to it as a he all the time and someone corrected me and said that they thought I had a female. The way it was suggested to tell is one of the ways that is kind of like a rule of thumb. It involves looking at the size of the claws and looking at the size of the body. The males tend to be bigger. The males tend to have larger claws than the females. Those kinds of ways of sexing an animal run into issues. For example, if I don't have another one to compare it to, how do I know which one's bigger? And if I do have two of them to compare to, how do I know which one's older? You know, the larger one might simply be a three or four year old crayfish, whereas the other one might be nine months old. You know, it doesn't make them male or female. So those aren't really good ways of positively determining the sex of the animal. I have, however, found out the positive way to determine the sex of the animal, and it is going to involve me turning the animal over and us having a look at its underside. So I'm going to start breaking this tank down. I'm going to pull it out of here and then we're going to have my other camera set up on the tripod and I will do my best to have a look at the undercarriage there and we'll see what we're looking at. We'll see if we can figure out exactly what the structures that I'm going to attempt to identify are. So give me a little bit. Let me get this tank broken down. Let me get him out of there and my other camera set up. Not necessarily in that order. And uh, we'll see what we see. All right, everybody, that was a lot easier than I thought. If you look underneath the crayfish, you will see between, not the last set of legs, but the second to the last set of legs, you see this little structure right here. That is a female. A male would have a little structure called a gonopod that would be just behind the last set of legs and would be a very distinct structure. So this little vent opening right there clearly indicates that this is a female. So we are on our way over to the new tank. So we're going to go ahead and drop her in and see what she does. All right, here we go. All of the uh, fish in there think that food's coming in, but little do they know it's going to be a new tank mate. So there she is. Now take note of her coloration. She's got a lot of blue and purple. 
There's sort of a dark patch behind her eyes. Her carapace is a pale, sort of tannish brown color. And let's see if she doesn't change color at all. Let me see if I can find the other crayfish. Who happens to just be cruising along right here. This crayfish was the same color and color patterning as what we were just looking at. Uh, with a little less purple. This one didn't have quite so much purple in the claws. But look how reddish orange this one has turned. So I'm not sure whether or not that has to do with the background substrate and the environment the animal's in. I haven't changed its diet significantly since being in the other tank. So I don't know what to make of that really other than the background environment has caused its color to shift a little bit. So here's my big one claw. And we'll give her some time and we'll see if she doesn't change color too a little bit. And I'm definitely going to get a little bit of video of her crawling around a little bit and making sure she settles in. It's not like they need any time to adapt or anything. They're just fun to watch and it's likely that she might go to ground and kind of find a nice little place to hunker down and hide for a little while uh, until she sort of gets used to her new environment. So if I've got a few minutes to watch her crawling around, I'm going to because it's likely we might not see much of her for the next couple days. It's also just as likely that she'll be out and about all the time. Uh, crayfish are not shy. They're really outgoing animals. They're not necessarily nocturnal. Uh, they will hunt at night. They will get out and, and root around at night. Uh, they tend, if you've got uh, any space for them to come out of the water, they tend to come out of the water more at night than they do during the day, though. Uh, crayfish can live out of water indefinitely, provided their gills remain wet. So, not unusual at all. There's my little mystery fish. Certainly seems curious about the new tank mate. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. I was going to say that's just the way it looks on the camera. When I actually looked in the tank, they were not really as close to each other as it appeared. So there you have it. She's just going to start exploring her new tank. She's got lots and lots and lots of space to explore. So make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss any updates on this tank. I am still working on it. we got a long way to go. Uh, when the weather starts getting nicer and I can get outside and get to fishing, uh, we'll start filling this tank up with some more of my local native species. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. Again, this is my 125-gallon native tank. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you real soon on the next one.